So in this video, I want to talk about the nice guy syndrome, how to understand if you're a nice guy, how to begin to destroy the nice guy. Well, basically we've got to stop the nice guy altogether. It is the number one thing that I see in clients that come to me that stop them from being good with women. They're just too damn nice. They have a nice guy syndrome. Now, am I saying you can't be nice? No, I'm saying you need to be nice by choice, not out of fear. And most nice guys, all nice guys actually are nice out of fear. And we're going to dive a little deeper into that right now. But if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the awesome content we got coming just for you. Make sure to like, hit the like button, make sure to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of that content that you've liked. And uh, make sure to comment. I love the comments. I've been reading the comments. They mean a lot to me and uh, it helps us to decide on the next content I'm getting for you. Now let's dive right in. What is a nice guy? Why are nice guys so bad? Why do they finish last? And when I say bad, they're actually really good people intentionally. They intend to be really good people, but why does life seem to suck for them? I was a, a huge nice guy myself and uh, it ruined my life. My early life did not go anywhere. It, it sucked immeasurably. Now, let me ask you a few questions to determine if you're a nice guy. Do you think you're a good listener? Do you listen to everything your girlfriend says? You can repeat it all back to her and uh, yet she still tells you, you don't listen to her deep down inside. Do you love to help everyone out? Do you, are you the guy that's always there to help all your friends? And, uh, and you feel guilty if you don't do it. So you just, you just do it, you buckle up and do it. And maybe it even builds a little resentment, but you're like, screw it, I don't care. I'm gonna do this anyway. It's the right thing to do. Do you constantly try to please your woman? But honestly, she's just never happy. Nothing you do ever really makes her happy. You think if I, dress the way she wants me to dress. If I, if I get rid of all the tension in this discuss, in this argument and agree with her more, I take her to the restaurant she wants to go to. Um, and, uh, I give her the freedom she wants. She's going to be happier, but yet she's always still unhappy. She doesn't appreciate all the things I do for her. That could be another sign. You're a nice guy. Have you ever been described as one of the nicest guys I've ever met by a beautiful woman or a woman you're attracted to? just not the right guy for me, but someday you're going to meet just the right woman. Have you ended up in the friend zone a lot? Women that love to put you in the friend zone, love to tell you all their problems, yet they never actually end up with you themselves. Matter of fact, do a lot of these women love to tell you their dramas and their problems with other men, all the crazy stuff that's going on. These guys that aren't so nice, these guys that maybe are, can be a little bit of an asshole, can be a little rude, but for some reason, they get super attracted to these guys and you who are always there for them, always taking care of them, they never actually show interest in. Well, that could be a sign that you're a nice guy too. And here's the last one I'm gonna list for today. And the list can be endless, by the way. Do you make your needs a priority or do you have trouble making your needs a priority? Nice guys are huge at putting everybody else's needs first and their own needs last. And they feel resentful but it's the right thing to do. It's something they need to do and they should do. Um, so if that's you, definitely listen to the rest of this video because we're gonna dive deeper now into what the nice guy is. And, uh, and at the end here, we're gonna be discussing some basic stuff you can do to start breaking up your nice guy today so that you can start getting the dating life and the, and the relationships in your life that you deserve. The basic principle here is that nice guys have a fear of tension. This is something I discovered a long time ago. Uh, nice guys have a huge fear of tension. They're afraid to step into tension. They're afraid of somebody bringing tension to them and they're always trying to get rid of it. They're always trying to mitigate tension. This starts in their early childhood usually. They grow up in a household that's either volatile or the parent closes their heart a lot when parenting and they get cold and icy. And that can be very brutal to a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old. It feels like your parent doesn't love you anymore. Let's deal with the first one. So in the first one, you might have a volatile parental situation. I did. My mother was bipolar. There was alcoholism in the house. There was a lot of random emotions going all over the place. Plus I had an icy stepfather that was super cold and calculating, basically a sociopath. And so when I came home, you never knew what the emotional environment was going to be like. Are they going to be in a good mood today? Generous, giving? Are they going to be angry? Are they going to take all their anger out on me? So it was best just to learn to shut my emotions off, close my heart and wall off. And with those of you who know my work, you know, I'm all about keeping an open heart 
and to stay distant from these people. And whenever the tension rose, what could I do to get the tension down or not let it rise in the first place? Because the moment I started to express emotion or create tension in the environment, uh, something bad could happen. And I was in survival mode because I'm a little child and I have to live with these people. And so I learned to adjust to their behaviors and learn to be who they need me to be to keep the tension low so I feel safe. And this strategy, whereas it may have worked to help you stay safe in childhood, at least till you grew up, does not work in intimate relationships, does not get you the intimate relationships you deserve and want as a man. The next style is uh, very simple, is that a lot of parents that will close off their heart, they shut off the emotion of the heart. And again, we go back to my teachings about snake keeping an open heart when they punish. So when they get mad at you, they close off their heart, pull their love away, and maybe for a day, two days, they, they're very stern and cold with you and it feels like you've lost the love of your parent and that's huge for a child. And then suddenly one day you come back and the heart's back on and they're loving and sweet again. And it's very confusing because you don't know when they're going to turn it off and when they're going to turn it on. So you learn not to create disruption or you're going to get that cold heart. And it hurts so much to get that cold heart. And today for a nice guy, it even hurts to get this from your woman. A beautiful woman in your life shows up in your life and she shuts off that heart on you and it reminds you of all that childhood pain. It takes you back to that deep emotional hurt. In my case, this was true. Both of these things were happening. I had a volatile parent that was emotionally unstable. I didn't want her to be unstable, so I always learned to mitigate her, calm her, be who I, she needed me to be because I didn't want to get that icy heart when she got cold and rejected me for two or three days at a time when she went into a bipolar depression. And this really um, hurt me deep down inside to the point where I learned growing up to try to recreate this in my uh, adulthood so that I could learn to fix it. And how I did that was really simple. It's like the first women I started getting attracted to were bipolar women. I would draw them like flies. I could pick them out of a room of a hundred women. I'd find the one bipolar woman, there'd be a strong sexual attraction for me. And then I would want to recreate this relationship of coldness, pulling away, pushing in. And then I'd want to recreate this dynamic of, of trying to prove I was good enough by getting her to open up to me. And I would do it by getting rid of the tension, trying to be super nice, which never ever worked. And so this is how I ended up doing a lot of what I do today in this business was because of my extreme nice guy syndrome. I wanted to get past it. I didn't want to be that guy anymore. So now as a guy that's afraid of tension, afraid of stepping into tension, how do you date a beautiful, uh, gorgeous, hot woman who his nature is to stir up tension, is to step into tension with you? Because tension causes growth. It causes you to grow into the next version of yourself. Tension causes expansion. Tension causes deeper bonds and deeper intimacies when handled correctly, when done in the right way. And unfortunately, if you're avoiding tension, you're not taking, it seems weird, but you're not taking that woman's gift where she's playing with that tension with you so you two can learn to dance and grow together. But bad boys are, bad boys take that tension in. They get it, they love to play with it, they love to dance with it. So an example of this would look like a bad boy because they're comfortable with tension. They weren't taught these lessons that we nice guys were taught as a child uh, about avoiding tension. They were taught to step into tension, to play with tension, have fun with tension. They see tension as fun. So the moment the woman creates a tension, they, they step into it with her and meet her at that level of tension. They dance with it. And this is what causes sexual turn on. Have you ever heard of the word sexual tension? Sexual tension leads to sex. Sexual tension leads to attraction. It leads to turn on, leads to intimacy. So if you're avoiding tension, you're constantly getting rid of the tension, then you're not going to move in that direction. Bad boys know deep down inside that creating tension often will get them the girl. And so they love to do it. They've, they've mastered this almost internally without using these words. It's just a feeling they get. They learned it in their parenting, in their childhood, somehow, some way. An example of this is I, there was a natural uh, who talks about uh, how his favorite thing to do was to go out and create tension with women when he stepped, when he would go out and meet them in the bars and the clubs. First thing he would say is something to the effect of, of and he talks about one woman he walked up to and he said, uh, uh, you know, your hair's so damn sexy. What's the chances of me getting a fistful of that by the end of the night? And he'd smile at her and she'd either get angry or she'd laugh. And he says, he's creating tension right there. 
And he said, the most important thing was not what I said, because that spikes the tension, but how I handle the tension afterwards. So the tension spikes and then she gets mad at me. I ground it out, relax and go, I can see you want to talk, but I need to go get some drinks for my friend. I'm going to go to, a, go to the bar and get that drink. And he wanders off to go to the bar and get the drink. This was an interview from the David D'Angelo series many years ago, The Natural. I have one natural friend that created, would create so much tension that uh, I don't think I want to repeat some of the stuff he did here because I don't think it's appropriate, but he would really spike that tension and it was really powerful for him. Now let's get back to this guy. He goes to the bar, he comes back with drinks, he's dancing with another girl, he's having fun, he's laughing. This girl comes over to him later and says, I've got to talk to you. And he's like, what, what do you mean? That was so rude, I want to talk to you. So he excuses himself from dancing with the girl and he goes, what are you talking about? And she goes, you were so rude, that was so inappropriate. And he goes, well, and then she goes, why would you say that? And he goes, well, look at you, you're beautiful. There's just something about you. I mean, maybe I was a bit forward, but, but wow. And suddenly that dropping of the energy, spiking the tension, dropping of the energy, relaxing into it, shows this emotional range, this ability to step into a lot of tension, get vulnerable, be real, um, and, and dance all over the place. And it actually pulls her in and creates that sexual attraction, that sexual tension. Sexual tension, when he started, when he spiked it, it was solidified when he dropped it. And that's just one example. It doesn't have to be that extreme. It could be as simple as holding the tension, not breaking and saying, you are so fucking beautiful. I had to come say hi to you. And then standing there in the tension for a moment and enjoying her. And it could be that direct. And it can be powerful if you stay grounded and solid through your whole body. Tension causes growth. I want you to think about tension in the world and think about the fact that how much tension might be uncomfortable for you as a nice guy and how much you're avoiding tension in all your discussions and trying to get rid of the tension with women. As a nice guy, you might go out on a first date and, the, and the, when you ask the woman where you want to go to dinner and she's like, I don't know, where do you want to go? She's trying to defer to your masculine. You're like, anywhere you want to go, any place you want to go makes me happy. Right there, she knows she's got a nice guy and it's going to be a boring day because he's never going to challenge her. He's never going to tell her what she really needs to hear, what he really feels, what what's important to him. If she picks a restaurant, he doesn't like it. He's probably going to say, okay, well, let's go there. That'll be good. And he'll just lie to her basically. This is why, and I'm, I'm gonna say this very powerfully, I'm gonna say this as best I can, I want you to get it right now. Nice guys lie and manipulate. They lie and manipulate because they tell the women what they wanna hear, not their truth, and they, uh, and they try to do it to get validation from the woman, not be real with the woman to discover if they have a real connection. They lie to get, to get what they want, basically at a deep level and to get validated and it doesn't work. And this is why breaking the nice guy will be so powerful for you. Learning to be real with women oftentimes will cause you to maybe say something she disagrees with, but will get her attracted to you because she's got a real man, a man that can set boundaries and say no. So I'm gonna invite you into this world of being real with women, to learn to speak your truth, to learn to say no, to learn to set boundaries, but you gotta do it with your whole body. Man, there's a couple caveats to this. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about and the most important or the main thing I want to talk about that's the most important is you can't step into tension with women and start saying no and setting boundaries from have to and need to. You want to do it from courage. You want to do it with an open heart. And uh, you can check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction, where I talk about how to open your heart, or some of my videos on opening your heart more. Because having an open heart is essential to being powerful with women. Having an open heart is essential to courage. It comes down to being courageous at a deep level. When I step into tension, I grow through, through courage. I grow and expand by using courage to go after my dreams. If I step into tension out of have to and need to, I will burn my body out. I will get tired and fatigued and it'll feel like work. If I step in from courage, it may be scary. I may be like, oh fuck, this makes me nervous. But afterwards, there'll be a sense of being lighter, more reward. Courage is about adventure. It's about choice. It's about decisiveness. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. Courage is about vulnerability. It's always, always, write this down, always having an open heart when you're stepping into tension. You don't close your heart and say, hey, my name's Brian, what's your name? You know, we're not going to that restaurant tonight. I'm definitely not. It's about opening your heart. It's about relaxing and saying hi. 
my name's Brian, what's your name? And feeling her with your heart. And then when she says a restaurant she wants to go to, you go, you know what, I don't like that restaurant. Oh my God, why would you even pick a restaurant like that? And you say it with this open, playful heart. And that means everything. That's a huge, huge difference from the first guy. Saying no, setting boundaries is huge. But you wanna have an open heart. You wanna be somebody that can almost laugh and be comfort comfortable and relaxed, even in the midst of his own fear. And that's the development of true courage. And uh, make sure to uh, check out my, um, uh, we got the fearlessman.com. Definitely check that out. That's all the online products that I've sold in the past for the Fearless Man Dating Company. And if you want to learn more about courage, check out truecourage.io. That's a new business I'm creating. Make sure to sign up for the mailing list. Truecourage.io is about developing this sense of courage and developing it in your life. So what I'm going to uh, give you one really quick is an understand. Courage or tension is everywhere. Tension is huge. You got to step into tension. You got to step into tension with courage. Tension turns the seed. If you take the idea of a seed, you bury it in the ground, you bury it under dirt, put dirt on top of it. All that tension and that resistance, it has to first break through the shell. It has to dig roots. It has to grow up through the earth and the soil and push and sprout into the surface and ultimately grow into a big, powerful tree. That tension is required for it to do that. If you want to grow big muscles, you need the tension. You need to go to the gym, work out every day. And the more you step into courage and vulnerability and love going to the gym, even though it's painful, causes pain, takes time, takes work, the more you're gonna create the proper hormones to grow the muscles you need to grow, to become the, the get develop the body that you wanna develop. Well, that's true with anything. If you went to the gym every day, hating going to the gym, thinking it's bad for you, how long before you hurt yourself like this? Before you, uh, this was skiing though, not the gym. And, uh, and you do something stupid. So courage is all about developing that passion for stepping into tension. Courage helps to unite passion with stepping into tension and helps to break the nice guy. Courage is the secret to breaking the nice guy and becoming a truly confident man, not a fake confident man with a wall of heart, but a truly confident man. So I'm going to challenge you. This is the part where I challenge you. I'm going to challenge you to make a list of people that you haven't fully been honest with, maybe 10 people if you can in your life or fully said what you're feeling, even, even if it's just something you need to say that you're feeling like maybe it's I love you or maybe it's I need to I can't do this this weekend or say no to. And I want you to keep a journal of where you've set boundaries and I want you to practice setting boundaries with those people. Call them up. Uh, in some cases, I want to be more vulnerable and I'll call up somebody and I'll say, you know what? I just want to send you some love and appreciation. It takes courage to do this because you've always been there for me and it means a lot to me. And I really love you for that. And then let go of all attachment to return. That's the key. Courage means no attachment. I don't need anything in return. If they respond, they respond. If they don't, they don't. Maybe another person you need to call up and set a boundary. You know what? I can't help you move this that weekend. I really need the weekend to heal myself. There's some stuff going on. I'm, I'm, I've got to set some boundaries and I need to take time for me. And then you do it with an open heart. Again, you let go of attachment, they get mad, they get mad, and you love them anyways. If they get happy, they get happy. Maybe you need to, uh, on your next date, you need to say, you know what, this is the restaurant I want to go to, or I don't want to wear this shirt that I'm, I'm not into this type of fashion. I'm going to dress the way I want to dress. I've seen so many nice guys get a girlfriend and let them dress them and turn them into their basic, um, like the women, they get this nice guy, he does everything she says, she turns him into the guy she wants him to be, and then she moves on because ultimately he just did everything she said. There was no challenge, there was no tension, there was no excitement, there was no sexual turn on in the end. So find these places where you can say no, set boundaries, whether it's with friends, with strangers, with family, and begin doing it today. Make a list of 10 areas and uh, write them all out and then take action. And then write the experience that came. Did you keep your heart open? Did you keep it open 50%? Did you let go of the outcome at the end? Use some releasing to let go of the outcome. Did you love that person, whether they got angry at you or not? And practice this more and more. You have to retrain, hear this one, you have to retrain people how to treat you to break the nice guy. They're all gonna try to put you back, note this, they're all gonna try to put you back in that nice guy box by pushing on you attention. You can't let them. You have to stay open-hearted and solid and let go uh, of being put back in that nice guy box. And then notice with time, they'll start to respond to you differently. It'll take a little bit of time because you have to break the old pattern. But then once the old pattern's broken, 
they will start to respond to you differently. They'll start to treat you differently. And when you let go of the nice guy, when you truly let go of the nice guy and you start to become you, you start to look at life through, I'm gonna be as real as I can be and as authentic as I can be with strangers or otherwise, you're gonna notice that approaching women, going on dates, all of that is gonna get so much easier because you're gonna to start to be real. You're gonna to start to be solid. You're gonna to start to stay open. And women are going to really respond to that. Um, they're going to, they're going to love it actually. And, uh, even on the approach, matter of fact, your sub communication is going to radically change when you approach a woman, she's going to feel a whole different human being. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got a lot out of it. Hopefully you understand now what a nice guy is. I know you did. If you read, if you didn't go through it a few more times and start destroying your nice guy, stop that inner nice guy right now. So if you got a lot out of this video, make sure to check out last week's video, the common mistakes you have when letting go of negative emotions. And you can use this on your nice guy syndrome to help break up uh, some of the stuff that's coming up for you. So there'll be a link somewhere in here to that video. Again, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Make sure to comment in the video. Let me know more what you want. And uh, with that said, remember, only the courageous really live. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a beautiful day.